All right, IBAISL2. Today we're going to talk about the cosine rule. Now, um, there are ways to uh, figure out the cosine rule, but they're kind of long and involved. So really today I'm just going to tell you guys the cosine rule, which is also called the law of cosines in different curriculums. Um, yeah, let's get started with it. So first up, let's see. Uh, I always remember it's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. But then there's a lot more after it. Then you have to subtract 2 times A times B times the cosine of capital C. So we could put the little hat on it if you want. Yeah, they do the hat, so I'll do the hat. Remember that capital C is the angle there. Now, that's a long and involved equation, but that's not all. There's more. There's another version of it. Uh, you can also start with B squared and then do a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of capital B. Now, let's look at what's happening here, the pattern. It always starts with um, a lower letter, lowercase letter, and then that is the uppercase angle that finishes off the equation. So I always remember there's kind of like a bookend relationship of like little c and big C here. And you can see that in the second line as well, that uh, little b starts it off here and big B ends it here. Um, the other pattern that I realize is that there's always like, a, you know, something squared plus something squared. And then those two letters get repeated here and here. So here we have an A and a B, and then we have an A and a B here as well. Um, same thing with the second equation, is that if here you have an A and a C, and then they repeat here as well, AC. So there's actually a third version of this, which is A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared, the other two letters, and then minus two times those two letters, so we'll repeat performance there, and then, then cosine of the capital letter that we started with. So, it's really just one equation, it's one structure with the letters rearranged in different ways depending on what you're given. So, um, there's kind of two situations where the law of cosines, so, oh yeah, this is also called the law of cosines. Um, there's two situations where you would use the law of cosines and instead of the law of sines. Which, by the way, if you can use the law of sines, oh my gosh, use it. It's so much simpler. Like, law of cosines is a lot. It's a lot of algebra. And it's easy to make a mistake in your calculator. So if you can go law of sines, use law of sines. So there's two situations where um, law of cosines is necessary. Um, one of them is I think of as an angle sandwich where like they give you this angle here. Like you know, uh, let's just say you know this angle and then you also know this side and this side. Like you have solid numbers for them and you're trying to solve for uh, perhaps this third side or something like that or an angle or something. Um, yeah, this is where you would use law of cosines when there's a sandwich situation of like side, side, and the angle between them. I guess you can think of this as like side, angle, side. The other situation where it's necessary is where you know all three sides, but none of the angles, and you're gonna try to look for an angle. So if you know all three sides, this is like a side, side, side situation is also where law of cosines comes in handy. Okay, let's take it for a test drive. Let's, let's do some math with it. So this is the original problem. They gave you the diagram. We didn't have to draw it. Although I could have given you just the, the lettering or just the words up there and had you draw the diagram, but they did give it to us. Um, oh, good job, Jolly. You forgot to write down what they're asking for. Oh, no, I did. Find the angles of triangle ABC given that A is 14, B is 12, and C is 7. Well, first of all, this is a side, side, side situation, which means that we have to use law of cosines if we're going to find any angles, or the cosine rule, as they call it. So um, I think you should always start with the biggest angle when you do this. Um, notice that 14 is the biggest side right here, which means that angle A 
is the biggest angle across from it. So this angle right here um, is gonna be the biggest angle in the triangle. So we're gonna set 14 squared equal to 12 squared plus seven squared minus two times 12 times seven times the cosine of capital A. I'll use the hat because they do. Okay, let's play some cleanup here. 14 squared is 196. 12 squared is 144. 7 squared is 49. 2 times 12 times 7. Yes, I'm using a calculator. It's early in the morning. Uh, minus 168. Uh, cosine of capital A. Um, then the 144 and 49, we can add together and subtract. Well, here, I'll be a good boy. I'll, I'll show step by step. So we get one, 196 equals 193 minus 168 cosine of A. Now, right here, you guys, is where people will make a mistake because some people will see this part right here and go, oh, I should take 193 and subtract the 168 and then divide that off and then do an inverse cosine. But you guys, the cosine is really glued together um, with that 168. So this chunk right here, you cannot break apart like that. You cannot subtract 168 from the 193. Uh, what we can, however, do is subtract this 193 off from the other side. So if you subtract uh, 196 minus 193, you get three is equal to negative 168 cosine of A. Then we can divide by negative 168. Negative three over 168 is equal to cosine of A. And then you can do a cosine inverse, making sure you are in degree mode in your calculator. Once again, from here on out, degree mode is your friend. Oh, I forgot all my hats. Hat, 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 hat. All right, uh, cosine negative three, or cosine inverse negative three divided by 168 is 91.02. Do they care in the book? Let's see. Nope, they go 91.0. They're doing like three sig figs. So say 91 degrees is about angle A. Now, if I update my diagram here, that means that this angle is 91 degrees. Now, if we're going to find the other three angles in this triangle, I could do this exact same process, like all of this again, for a different angle, but then using different numbers. So do law of cosines again, which I think is actually what the book does. But I think that's doing too much because now, if you look at our diagram, do you see how we have an angle and an opposite side with solid numbers on them? That means that we can use law of cosines, or sorry, law of sines, or the sine rule, to find uh, any other angle. So let's go for angle C. So if we're going to find angle C, that's connected to 7. So the law of sines says we can do sine of 91 over 14 is equal to sine of capital C over 7. Multiply both sides by 7, and we get 7 sine 91 all over 14 is equal to sine of C with a hat. So sine inverse to get the C value by itself. So sine to the negative one, seven times, <coughs> excuse me, sine 91 divided by 14, close up parentheses. It's about 30 degrees. It's like 29.995, but to three sig figs, it's about 30 degrees. Now, if I update my diagram, let's get rid of some of this. Um, that means that we just found C, and this is 30 degrees. 
Now, we could use law of sines or law of cosines to find angle B, but you know what? Once we have two angles in a triangle, so we know the 30, we know the 91, can't we find this guy just by subtracting from 180? I think so. So let's, another color, uh, angle B is going to be equal to 180 minus 30 plus 91. So 180 take away 30, take away 91. That leaves us with 59. So here's our answers. Uh, and that's equal to B. A is 91, C is 30, B is 59. Next one, find the length of the lake CB given the distances AB equals 290, AC is 225, and angle A is 72. Uh, they did provide a diagram with this one, so uh, we're just gonna run with it. Although, once again, I think you could have drawn that picture and it would have been fine. Um, this is your classic angle sandwich. Look, side, angle, side. Angle smushed between the two sides. So, um, if I'm going to try to find CB, yeah, let's go, okay, let's go. CB squared is going to be 225 squared plus 290 squared minus 2 times 225 times 290 times the cosine of 72. That's the angle between them. Um, this situation is actually way better than the last problem we did because you don't really have to do much algebra because this whole side over here is just numbers. So it's just a calculator cruncher on that side. So 225 squared plus 290 squared minus 2 times 225 times 290 times cosine of 72. So that means CB squared is equal to 94398.28, about, I, I rounded. But then you just need to square root that number. So CB is about 307.24 meters. Does the book agree? They said 307 meters, but I because they're doing three sig figs, but I, I like to do two decimal points. I guess I wasn't doing that on the problem before. Not very consistent, Jolly. Um, uh, come test time, just always do two decimal points. Last example, towns A, B, and C form triangle ABC with the sides 8, 13, and then we have an angle between them of 50. Once again, I think this is better than the first problem because this is your good old angle sandwich. Uh, this one is there's not much crunching involved. Uh, we're gonna find angle A and B. Okay, interesting. So to find angle A and B, I think first we should find this side of AB. And then once we do that, we can use law of sines and then just subtract from 180. I'll explain what I mean. Um, first, let's find AB. There's everything jammed into the law of cosines. So we'll do 13 squared plus eight squared minus two times 13 times eight times cosine of 50. This is about 99.3. Now I'm gonna keep that number on my calculator uh, because I, I'm gonna square root it and I want everything to be as accurate as possible. When you square root that, you get 9.97, which means if I update my picture, this side is 9.97. Now, I know the distance between A and B, but we need to find the angles A and B. Um, now that I found 9.97, I have a pair of angle and opposite side, which means law of sines time. Let's switch colors. So that means sine of the angle over the opposite side is equal to sine of any other angle, let's do A, over its opposite side. So multiply by eight and then do an inverse sine. I 
Make sure your calculator's in degree mode. Eight sine 50 divided by 9.97. 37.93. So if I update my picture, that means this is 37.93 degrees. Then I have two angles out of the three, so we can really just subtract from 180 to say that uh, angle B is 180 minus 50 plus 37.93 is 92.07 degrees. Really close to a right triangle, but not quite. So there's our answers. Uh, A is 37.93, B is 92.07. All right, guys, happy studying.